so I'm back looking at this again just to try and finish off what I started in the video last week because I do think that more attention needs to be focused on what to my knowledge is still classified as Agenda 21 uh, and their targeting of children specifically it's long past the days of just accusing communists of taking over the school board it's, it's a lot more insidious than that because fundamentally one of the core ideas behind targeting the children and this idea of children's rights and so on and so forth is to implement all of the ideas that the people behind the UN are pushing but to incorporate it within this umbrella of children's rights so if they have this established in the schooling system that children have to learn specific things etc etc they then have the ability to dictate what these children will learn so a brief summary quickly of the people that are Con have conjured up this report that they are responsible for pumping out year on year, to my knowledge. Alliance of Scottish Children's Charities that work to improve the awareness, understanding and implementation of the UN's Convention on the Rights of the Child. So that's everything to do with brainwashing and dictating the curriculum, etc, etc. Um, to give you a brief idea of some of the things that are included within this shit, we've got uh, civil rights and freedoms, uh, general principles, violence against children, uh, we've also got family environment and alternative care because we really need the United Nations to, di to dictate how we raise our children if we have any, uh, disability, basic health, well, uh, welfare, education, uh, special protection measures, asylum seeking, refugee and migrant children, a fucking course. So anyway, uh, we got to about here last time round if I'm not mistaken, discrimination on the grounds of age. Children still still do not have full protection from age discrimination. A number of provisions under the Equality Act 2010 exempt children from protection against age discrimination. For example, children are excluded in relation to the provisions of services and public functions, yada yada. The Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union includes a standalone right not to be discriminated against. This right is binding on EU institutions and member countries where they when they are acting within the scope of EU law. The European Union Withdrawal Act and European Union Withdrawal Agreement Bill will not retain the Charter and as such this additional protection will be lost, regressing quote unquote legislative protections of children's rights to be to not be discriminated against. Recommendation, of course, is the UK and Scottish Government should ensure children have equal legislative protection from age discrimination and, and there is no regression in this protection as a result of the UK leaving the EU. So then it goes on to talk about counterterrorism. And then, of course, we come to prevention of discrimination and stigmatisation. Minority ethnic children. Children from minority ethnic communities in Scotland are at a higher risk of poverty and are more likely to live in overcrowded homes, while some minority ethnic groups are also disproportionately affected by poor health. Racist bullying persists in schools, and such incidents can feel very challenging for minority ethnic children. Anecdotally... <laughs> Yep. Many minority ethnic children find it difficult to report their own experiences of bullying and might think that adults at school won't understand or might not take it seriously, anecdotally. Research conducted by with BEME individuals at secondary schools found that many of the pupils think that teachers are not aware of the challenges related to racism and discrimination because it's probably in their head, if not it's anecdotal anyway, and that they're not knowledgeable about the process required in the case of a racist incident at school because only a black, Asian or a minority ethnic individual knows what it feels like to be the victim of racism, of course, because white man bad. In 2017, Rainbow Unicorn Government published a Favour Scotland for All because race equality action plan sounds great on paper, but uh, the people responsible for this Fair Scotland for All race equality shite proclaim that race doesn't exist. They believe in this bollocks about whiteness and so on and so forth. And you kind of get to understand the mindset of these people when you read through it all. It's continual attacks on white boys and white men, repeatedly. If it's not from feminists, it's from anti-racists, quote-unquote, that will be taken to improve the lives of experiences of minority ethnic communities. <laughs> so not whites, just minority ethnics, of course, including advancing race equality, tackling racism and addressing the barriers that don't exist that they claim prevent them from realising their full potential anecdotally. Gypsies, whatever, disabled children, care experienced children, migrant asylum seeking refugee children uh, and their families face various barriers to exercising their rights and accessing services which meets their needs. More efforts are needed to prevent racism and discrimination and, and ensure they feel safe and secure living in rainbow unicorn land because they are all that is important. The LGBMs is on the T and intersex children. 
Scottish government stated in its 2018 Progressing Human Rights of Children report that one of its major equality priorities is to reform the Gender Recognition Act. The analysis of the initial con consultation that took place um, found that 60% were in favour of amending the process of applying for a Gender Recognition Certificate. I don't, I don't know about that one. In December 2019, Scottish government set a draft Gender Recognition Bill accompanied by a public consultation. The bill proposes several changes to the current processes for obtaining a GRC, including removal of the requirement to provide medical evidence of a gender dysphoria diagnosis, removal of the need to apply to the gender recognition panel, and applying to register to the general uh, to the register general for Scotland instead, and the reduction of the time where someone has to live in their acquired gender from two years to three months. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Girl guiding surveys found that girls and young women are increasingly aware of gender and equality issues and that they are recognising and reporting sexism across all areas of their life more often because they're being taught from the minute they are able to process words. All there is to know about fucking feminism. When asked if I could change one thing to improve girls' lives, stereotyping of girls and women feature prominently amongst girls' answers. How convenient. So we have the gender intersectional far left feminists the social constructionists who are obsessed with the idea of completely removing anything that would be considered normal in relation to boys and girls, men and women and now we have little girls who are now parroting what these people believe, these girls are now making these beliefs their own Many women and girls face further inequality because of intersecting aspects of their identity or their social economic status Educational approaches to change gender stereotypes and sexist culture norms like women having children are of central importance in challenging inequality. You people make me fucking sick. I'm sorry, I just... But uh, I, I, I should note, actually, girls and young women, LGBT, migrant, yada yada, care, people in care, disabled children, gypsy traveller children, minority ethnic children, what group's missing? <laughs> able-bodied white boys, climate strikes. <laughs> An estimated 5,000 children took part in a Glasgow and Edinburgh strikes on the 15th of March with further walkouts taking place across Scotland. Youth Strike for Climate estimated that 20,000 children across the UK participated in the first global protest, rising to 50,000 in March 2019. Some politicians questioned whether children should leave school to participate in the strikes with thin lips, saying that children were right to challenge politicians on the response to climate change. All get fucked. I mean, just get... So let me get this straight. You're putting yourself in a position to now pretend to the world that the children are in the right for challenging you on your inaction. Why did it take children to persuade you to act on your previous inaction? It's such a scam. Anyway, many people face threats of punishment or disciplinary action for missing school, with some defending their position, stating that environmental activism was an educational experience in itself. Yes, because they're going out to protest, writing shit on placards that they've been taught in school. Anecdotally, of course, anecdotally, because there's no proof for any of the shit they're about to say, children have reported that schools across Scotland have taken very varied approaches to the strikes. A lack of clear national or local authority policy led schools to handle cases in a uh, piecemeal way. After 2019's protests, four local authorities changed their absent policies to allow students to take part in the strikes without disciplinary action as long as they have parental permission, including City of Glasgow Council and Edinburgh is also. Edinburgh Council later revised its policy to allow children only one strike absence per year without parental consent. The EIS, the largest trade union of teachers in Scotland, has bought people's calls and written to Scottish local authorities asking them not to sanction pupils for their climate strike action. <laughs> Fuck. Children have been vocal that the right of freedom of assembly takes precedent over any perceived loss in education. Is that right? Well, considering you're being taught a load of shit, that's debatable. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, man. <laughs> Young human rights defenders, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. What is going on? <laughs> we have to strongly to news that some children have been threatened with detention and objected to Theresa May's public criticism of striking children. The action group said such reactions were an example of the power imbalance between adults and children. Power imbalance between adults and children. What? UNCRC states that the aim of education is in part the development of respect for the natural environment. Hence why they're being taught about climate change. 
The 2016 UN Day of General Discussion on the Environment also noted that without a healthy environment, a child cannot live or develop. The status of children's environmental health is also closely linked, closely linked sorry, to other rights, noting that despite the rhetoric from world leaders, children's concerns for the environment is not reflected in the degree to which they are able to participate meaningfully in decision making on a wide range of global environmental issues that matter to them now and the future. Pull your children out of school if you can, that's my only advice. The government and public bodies, including education leaders, should actively support children to exercise their right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. And nations that were behind the smacking ball in Scotland. This gives you a little bit of an idea. Prohibits as a matter of priority all corporal punishment in the family, including through the repeal of legal defences such as reasonable chastisement ensuring that corporal punishment is explicitly prohibited in all schools and educational institutions and all other institutions. Strengthen its efforts to promote positive and non-violent forms of discipline and respect for children's equal right to human dignity and physical in integrity with a view to eliminate the general acceptance of the use of corporal punishment in child rearing. Similar recommendations have been made by the Human Rights Committee in its concluding observations and by Liechtenstein, Ireland, Mongolia, Sweden, yada yada. And then of course this is one of their pea brain examples. If you get hit as an adult, you can charge for assault, but not with a parent hitting a kid. That's not fair. Well that's not for the United Nations to decide, is it not? Violence against women and girls, of course. Violence against women and girls includes a range of actions that harm or cause suffering and indignity to women and children. Gender inequalities are a root cause. See? This is what I was referring to in a previous video, or in several previous videos. Inequalities, sorry, build in children from a very young age are the root cause of all of the problems that we see in later life. So girls going into a lesser paid job, well it's gender inequalities from childhood, etc, etc. Violence against women, that's because men grow up to see women as subordinate. Well, that's inequalities from young. So what's the solution? Well, we know the solution. It's the same every time. It's predictable. Despite the many advances being made, inequalities persist. Women and children who experience violence specifically because of their gender. See, specifically because of their gender. That is not, that's not even anecdotal. That's just a lie. Also face multiple discriminations across other protective characteristics. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, oh yeah, that's what it is. As a result, they might face additional barriers. As a result, they might. But they don't, do they? For example, women and girls from black and ethnic minority groups can face additional bars and, <laughs> and if they're gay too. <laughs> Such shit. <laughs> Equally safe is the Rainbow Unicorn government's strategy for preventing and eradicating violence against women and girls. And how are they going to prevent and eradicate violence against women and girls? Well, it stems all the way back to, as I said here, gender inequalities is the root cause. They claim it's all because men, uh, it's all because they're women. Men see them as subordinate. Well, they're going to have to enter the academia. They're going to have to promote their feminist cancer. They're going to have to effeminate, make the boys effeminate. They're going to have to do whatever they can to empower little Jenny. It was the um, safe, explicit acknowledgement that preventing gender-based violence is dependent on reducing gender inequality. See what I'm saying? Gender-based violence is dependent on reducing gender inequality. What are you, what are you talking about? <sighs> Any excuse is such cancer and it's so obvious what they're trying to do. They're trying to ensure that our populations are not replenished. I don't know how more obvious it has to become. Gated funding has been put in place to tackle violence against women, with the government investing 11.8 million from the Equality Unit and 20 million from the Justice Unit. The Equality Unit and the Justice Unit! Nicola Sturgeon, getting on with a fucking day job. Meanwhile, demand for services for women and children have risen consistently year on year, with 56% of the groups operating waiting lists for refuge. Many women's aid groups report having to access precarious funding from diverse sources to meet increased demand. Recommendations ensure that ongoing implementation of equally safe is informed by the views and experiences of children affected by violence against women and girls. Share that organisations and support services are sufficiently resourced in recognition to the increasing demand. Bullying and violence. The UNCRC concluding observation intensify its efforts to tackle bullying and violence in schools, including by teaching human rights building, the capacities of students and staff members to respect diversity, <laughs> improve students' conflict resolution skills, monitoring regularly the incidents of bullying at school and involving children in the initiatives of monitoring aimed at eliminating bullying. Never been able to do it before, but hey, if we, if we can teach them to respect diversity, that'll solve everything. 
<laughs> Some children are disproportionately affected by bullying. A 2015 study found that 2 in 5 secondary pupils had experienced prejudice based bullying. Not normal bullying, no. Prejudice based bullying because white man fucking bad. <laughs> Concerns have been raised over increases in racism following the vote to leave the EU. Anecdotal. In other cases, organisations have highlighted a spike in racist incidents following terrorist attacks. Oh my god. Particularly against Muslim pupils. In 2018, a report by the Coalition for Race Equality, another group that probably don't believe in race, so why call yourself that, highlighted inconsistent policies, reporting processes and recording of racially motivated incidents across Scottish schools. As a result, exact details of the number of children affected is not entirely clear, making it difficult to monitor progress. So how do you know that it's only up then? Children with a disability or additional support. That's disgusting if you're bullying kids that are disabled, uh, whatever. Children concerned by the nature of targeting uh, and pre sorry, children are concerned by the nature of targeting and prejudice as well as the management of bullying incidents and the impact of those on their mental health. A respect me stakeholder consultation found that children want to see more effective management of bullying incidents. Yada yada. Education system is important in fostering a culture of non-discrimination and mandatory children's rights education has been recommended by the UN. Programs such as the Rights Respecting Schools Award have impacted on reducing the occurrences of bullying and some local authorities and staff involved have observed an impact on children's attitudes towards diversity. Oh, imagine my shock. Because that's what this is all about, isn't it? You couldn't give a fuck about bullying. 